So welcome to another unboxing video for SceneWorld. And another parcel from Cytronic Software to open. I've removed some of the packaging already to speed things up. And as we can see, this is the ultimate edition of Argus from Cytronic, also in the box. We have a sheet of stickers. The box size changed. Which meant Shows them how to use different stickers. And here then is the map of the kingdom. And an Argos poster. And on the back of the kingdom map. is the in-game map showing you all the locations. So, the Lands of Argus, we start off every game in the North Forest at location 4. So we're going back to that when we look at the gameplay. Also in the box is a leaflet for the Forum 64 and Protovision Game Competition 2017, which has a sports theme. So you can use the QR codes to get straight to that. Anyway, back to the main box itself. We'll look at the back here. And as you can see, there are screenshots and description. For decades, Zorn sat in the Temple of Lies, waiting for his moment to free Legion from the pit. With the Star Child kidnapped, only one man stands in his way, Thorin, son of Fern. Battle your way through 1,500 locations, including forests, temples, and caverns. Find new weapons and unlock chests to aid you in a quest to find and free the Star Child. Actual Commodore 64 screenshots. Programming by Ajin Volkers, graphics and design by Trevor Story, and soundtracks by Sun Cross. So we open the box, and inside we find a set of Argus stickers. So, still from the intro, the Argos logo, Cytronic Software logo, Hodor My 64, and then two of the enemy types you'll meet. Another Argus sticker. An Argus art card, the Argus pin badge, the oh, very excellent Cytronic software pin badge, and a lovely two sided Argus keyring. You can see Jason packages things well. So then we have the Soul Cross soundtrack CD for Argus. CJ's has included the spine card, and this is still in its shrink wrap. So there's 20 tracks there, including some uh, remade versions of the original tracks 8580 SID designed for. And then, here then, is the main game box. So if you order the Premium Plus Edition, you'll get this. This is the ultimate edition box of everything. So again, we have the story and credits on the back. And opening up the case, we have instructions and basic controls on there. And telling you about the layout of the screen, we have the actual disc, with disc care instructions, and then the manual, again, story, loading instructions, similar to what was on there, the inlay itself, and the credits. So that's a look at everything that's in the Ultimate Edition of Argus. Premium Plus and Budget editions are also available. I'm sure you can agree. But once again, 
Jason has done a great job with the packaging. Despite the problems with the box size. So that's a little look at what surrounds the game. The next section of the video will be looking at the actual game itself. So now we have the gameplay section of this video on Argus. We've loaded the game and here is the logo by Smiler. Followed by the intro sequence. Which tells you the story. So we'll skip that by pressing fire. And here we are at the main menu. You can start a new game or load a saved game. You can save your progress during the game. And we can also see then that the basic display at the top. We have our first person view of the world, which we'll see in a minute. Below on the left you have the current weapon. On the right is the room location, which is very useful for when used in conjunction with the map. And in the middle is the compass display. Now as you can see, this shows you which direction you're facing and where the exits are. So if you imagine the exits are around you in a ring, here we can see there is an exit to the southwest from this location. So we'll start a new game. And we can hear the excellent music from Soul Cross. So if we rotate our view, we've right, go around in a circle, and we go back left. So we can now press forward to move on to a new location. You can see we have the location number, and the exits changed. So we walk through the forest. A flashing red screen like that means an enemy is nearby. So we press fire to attack and kill the enemy. So this is how we explore in first person. Your energy is shown to the left, the creature's energy is shown to the right, and if we now press down, you'll see I picked up that slab of meat, which can be used to heal your energy. So if we click on here, we can see the auto map function. This shows the current section of the map. Blue square is our location. Green squares show where we've been. And also from this menu, we can save to disk. So we'll go back to the menu. Here's where we store our weapons. Over here we have two different types of keys, potion and other trinkets you encounter during the game. The current weapon is put into that square. Click there, click there. So exit and go west or east from here. Again we have another enemy type, the snake. And when you need to move into other areas of the game, there are several different types of enemy. There's a very useful potion, which will heal our energy. Now we've reached a dead end. So we have to go back the way we came. And take another path. So as you're exploring, you're looking for keys to open doors and chests. Sometimes you may find yourself in a little loop going around the same locations, which is why you really need that map. 
we can have a look on the in-game map and see where we are. So you see we're in a little area of rooms here, so we need to find a different location. So we're back at that set again. So let's try going north, north, north. Now uh, we can go east, east. So we another enemy, another snake to beat. useful to find the dead ends because very often they'll have something significant in them. This might be an enemy or it might be one of the doors which then leads you into other sections of the game. You see the enemy attacking there, doing some damage. So we go down into here and there we go, eating the meat, healed some of our energy. Another potion again, potions heal your energy. So you see now we've come to this complex at the top right there. West room five. This is my one slight bugbear with the game. If you encounter an enemy, you can quite easily turn the wrong way and take quite a bit of damage. dead end here and there's a key see the enemy is going to be in one of those sections where the walls are solid where there's no exit Again, another dead end here I don't have the map with me at the moment. If you get the digital download, you get a map file so you can have that open in one window and the emulator open in another. If you buy the physical edition, you get a map poster. It's double sided, so on one side. shows you the artwork on the other side it shows you the map and we have a chest now see a blue key will open the door to another section a yellow key opens a chest so we need to find and kill a monster or find a hidden yellow key. So I hope that's given you a good flavour of what Argus is all about. The graphic effect is very clever, moving very smoothly. 
a lot of personality in the different enemy types. And the game is backed by Saul Cross's excellent music, which reminds me very strongly of the classic Mastertronic game Master of Magic, featuring music by Rob Hubbard, and making that comparison is uh, very flattering, I'm sure, to, to Saul, but he deserves it. It works really well in the context of the game. Control is easy to pick up. As I say, apart from this one slight needle about facing the wrong way when the enemies turn up. The extra that come in the Ultimate Edition are beautifully put together by Jason McKenzie and the Cytronic and Bonu Zone, making it a real collector's package. And by a coincidence, while I was playing some Super Nintendo games recently, I came across a game by Psygnosis Software, the British company, called Obitus, which is a role-playing game featuring a first-person view. Now we can see here the map is marked in light blue where that chest was, so if we want to go back to it And you'll also find exits, which is what we need the blue keys for, and they will lead west, east and south from this section, the forest section, to other areas with different graphic styles and different sets of monsters. So there's a total of 1500 locations to visit. It's a massive map. Must have taken Trevor a long while to design, plan, and execute. With Atchim's Code, it's a very polished, enjoyable role playing game that will offer hours of entertainment. Having the save feature, of course, is very useful. You see those wall sections give you a clue that there's something important nearby. And there we go, we've opened the door. We can go through it to another section which loads in from disk. Very quickly, and you see we have a different layout. Here's one of the different enemy types skeleton, and not only does he look great, also another reminder of the classic Master of Magic with its. Skeletons. So if we go into the menu, we see we now have a different section. So the white circle marks the exit back to the forest.
to a dead end, there might be something hidden here. There is indeed, there's another chest, but I don't have the key to open it. So I'm going to let this uh, big troll kill me. He's doing a good job of it. There are other weapons to find that do more damage. And we're now back at the start screen. So, I hope you've enjoyed this look at Argus for the Commodore 64. Keep watching the Scene World channel for more unboxing videos, for more interviews listen to our podcast and keep it Commodore 64.